eyes to every single story the passion and the glory just trying to make it through the day you know we're trying to come together arm in arm and hand in hand and with my brother i will fight to unify our land america home of the brave Stand strong when we're willing to change And I will watch the feet of freedom And bow down on my knees Praying for a healing Fighting for the freedom Of my brother and me And on the other hand There are those who would undo us Unruly who would rule us And break us all apart And I will stand beside you And fight against injustice And lawless ones among us Come on, let freedom ring America Home of the brave We stand strong Guitars and tune them Melody and harmony Let's make a little revelry He pluribus tune Get your guitars and tune them Melody and harmony Let's make a little revelry He pluribus tune Get your guitars and tune them Melody and harmony Let's make a little revelry John Maxwell and I am with my friend John Morgan and I have on two different occasions watched him do the George Bush impersonation. He's better than George W. himself. Funny, I enjoy him and you will also. What I love about him is great values, great giftedness and he will come into your life, into the life of your group and give you humor and give you food for thought that will truly make a difference in your life. Well, I'm the free world leader. It's a free world out there, folks. Freedom's rolling out to you. Oh, let's roll. Well, I'm the good news instigator. Compassionate conversator. Friday, welcome to your weekend 
on the John Morgan Show. I'm your host, John Morgan, and I am encouraged about the future. That's right. There's a lot to be encouraged about, no matter what. Focus, hard work, excellence, trust, faith. So many elements to our Christian life that make it awesome, make it worth living. talk about that today. If you're going to have a puppy, you're going to pick up poop. (laughs) Sometimes if you don't even have a puppy, Baby, I'm fighting off the blues. Oh, yeah. Welcome to the John Morgan Show on Friday afternoon. I'm your host, John Morgan, and I'm so glad to be here. That time I was ready for the clap track. It didn't scare me anymore. Maybe I'm getting accustomed to it. And you know, a lot of life is just that. It's doing the same thing over and over and over again until it becomes second nature. I'll never forget the first time I stood on a stage to give a George W. Bush impersonation speech. It was at my sister's law firm. And I remember standing just off stage right beforehand and it was a lot like the the nervous energy that you get when you're sitting in a roller coaster and you know it goes around and then and then it starts that click 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 up the hill real slow and they do it slow to build the anticipation and and to give you that perspective you know cuz you go up higher and higher and higher and if you've got that you know that ac- acrophobia it's like oh and and then wham down you go but once you're in the middle of the free fall, it's all enjoyment from there, if, if you're like me. I'll never forget the first time I jumped out of a perfectly good airplane. airplane. <laughs> Kathy had talked me into it, and I thought, oh, I didn't know what to think. <clears throat> but the worst part of it was standing out there with that open door, just waiting for the three, two, one, and out you go. And once, I, I, the worst part is before you jump. I, I know it seems uh, counterintuitive. It would seem like the worst part should be the falling uh, to your, uh, you know, yeah. But no, the worst part is before you jump. Your heart is just thumping out of your chest. And uh, it is so terrifying and exciting. But but on my fourth or fifth parachute jump, I I'd have to think about how many times I've actually done it. Um, it was so much less terrifying because I now have history behind me. You know, life is like that. You start a new business. You start a new ministry. You start a new company. You decide to get pregnant for the first time. You get pregnant without even intending to for the first time. And all of a sudden, there's a whole new bank of activities that you've never done before that are dead ahead and you have you have to learn it. I've I've I'm sure I've never actually counted but I'm sure I've got my 10,000 hours in of practicing being a celebrity impersonator and now I run to the stage. I I really don't have stage fright anymore and it's a blast to uh, get in front of an audience and speak to them. I, you know, I actually had lots of stage practice from the time I was a teenager. I mean, I was in all of the play. I mean, I was in a, a play when I was in third grade, St. George the Dragon Slayer. Yes, and I still believe that I am called to be an El Cabong, a dragon slayer, a Zorro in the spiritual realm. But I was so frightened in that play in third grade that I literally wet my pants. And that story is in my book, War on Fear. (laughs) 
Sorry to say, but it's absolutely true. And I've, I've, uh, I've since become much more accustomed to the stage and actually enjoy performing in front of folks. And, and uh, it's become more normal. But the, a funny thing happened this afternoon. I had my Bluetooth headphones in and uh, was on my way to mail a book uh, that I had sold, take it, to, take it to the post office, a copy of War on Fear. And uh, I changed my shirt. My wife made me change my shirt because I didn't look normal in the shirt I had on. <laughs> she was un, unhappy with it. And, uh, and as I changed my shirt and then put on my very funny mask because I decided to wear it uh, to the post office, I noticed that one of my Bluetooth headphones was missing. And I was not happy about that, the AirPod Pro, whatever they call them. And, uh, I mean, I, I looked a lot through the house, couldn't find them anywhere. Look, I had walked out to the car and then turned around and walked back in, looked all in the bushes around the car, and there was just nowhere to be found. And, um, and then uh, it occurred to me, maybe it got caught up in the shirt that I took off. So I, had, I said, Kathy, would you, help, would you mind checking the shirt? And the shirt was now out in the dog area because actually, although it was one of my shirts, um, it's one that that we let the dog wear from time to time uh, when she needs to wear a shirt so she won't chew on herself if she's got a little side wound or something. And we have a hole cut in it for her tail. So <laughs> Kathy didn't want me walking out of the house in a shirt with a hole cut in it for my tail. <laughs> And that's where we found my Bluetooth headphone. And that was frustrating, but I found it and everything was good. And then when I walked back in the house after returning from the post office, I decided to roll the recycling bin back up to the house. And we have a puppy in our house, an awesome little little puppy dog that is my son's dog. And uh, we didn't ask for a, a puppy. We didn't want a puppy, but we have a puppy. And so now we have... A lot of picking up to do. We are, we could invest in the paper towel company because of all the picking up we've had to do for the puppy. And um, you know, in 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 the comments, I said if you're going to have a puppy, you're going to pick up poop. Well, it's also true if you have children, because had we not had John John, the puppy would not be in our house. But if picking up a little poop is the price I have to pay. To have my son in my house, you better believe I'll pick up a lot. And, uh, of course, the puppy's getting better, and she's not done that actually in a while. She's actually doing better. She's pooping outside, which is where I came into contact with it. As I was rolling the recycling bin back up to the house, I did not realize that I had stepped into a wonderful pile of poo and drug it in the house and stepped into the kitchen. And Kathy said, I smell poop. And I was thinking that we only let the dogs go out in the backyard and we pick it, you know, we pick it up and put, throw it away. So I thought, well, it's it's probably your imagination, you know. And I looked down, and I had some on my ankle. It was on the side of the shoe. And I underneath the shoe is this big clump of this, uh, and my wife's like, you know. Um and 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 I felt like God spoke to me and he said, Nobody said life would be easy. Nobody said accomplishing your grand goals would be without conflict, difficulty, and challenge. And all of us face different kinds of challenges. Good to see you, Kevin. Thank you for joining us on the the John Morgan Show on a Friday afternoon. We have... Mental challenges, some I face right now that I'm struggling through. We have physical challenges, illnesses, and business challenges. COVID has just destroyed a whole industries. Uh, anybody in the entertainment business is scrambling right now. I mean, think about it. All your major acts... Are, are there 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 some are having concerts here and there but for the most part people are hunkered down they're not really doing big time shows out there they're doing virtual shows you can't 
you can't really charge a lot for a virtual show. And the audience is going to be smaller because people, it's not the same thing. There's, there's something about a live audience. And I'm doing uh, Zoom performances for companies, for corporate events. And, and they're fun. They're, they're awesome. They're, they're a blast. But it's still not the same thing as live. And you just can't charge the same. You can't make as much. Of course, you also don't have to travel as much. And so if I can, if I can you know, figure out that puzzle, I could do two or three of them in a day. And so there's a huge window of opportunity at the same time as a huge big challenge. And you've got to, you've got to focus on maintaining your, your place of grace when thoughts come along. Because my book, War on Fear, that I wrote with my best buddy in the whole wide world, Joel Balin, that's a comment, actually, that the best buddy in the whole wide world is a phrase from my other best buddy in the whole wide world, Paul Balov. He, he calls me his best buddy in the whole wide world. And, I, and I, if you're watching, Paul, forgive me for stealing your phrase to refer to my other best buddy in the whole wide world, Joel. But Joel and I wrote this book, War on Fear, together. And as we studied fear and how it works, we realize that it starts with a desire to pull us out of the grace that God gives us in the present and, and tries to get us to focus on an unknown in the future. And pondering the future is expensive because it can cause you to th- think about things that haven't even happened and worry and, and fret and you, you can actually live a worst-case scenario without even being there. It's, it's, you project forward into a terrible future instead of tr- trusting in God, whose name is many things, but one is Jehovah Jireh, our provider. And he will be there in the future with his grace, just like he has been there in your ever-present present. We don't live in the future. And we can't live in the past. That I, 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 for many years, actually spent hours upon days, upon months, upon years, regretting past mistakes and living with that regret and replaying it over and over and over and then projecting that, that uh, personal weakness and failure into the future instead of simply enjoying God's grace in the here and now. The past is gone. If you've repented, you're forgiven. If you need to pay restitution or something, you know, pay it. Get on with your life. There's so much good to live, and we got to just just buck up and do the right thing and plow forward, and it's not easy. What, Karen, good to see you, Karen. Hello. What did you say? Hotel and service industry is suffering too. Yes, yes, yes. A lot of entertainers. Disney cut back some time ago on a lot of their entertainment. And uh, that's true. But God has us in the palm of his hand. And he will provide for us. We don't need all the things we think we need. You know, I, I was just, I was contemplating there's there's so many ways to exist and thrive we don't have to have everything we have right now if if things turn negative i don't believe they will i i honestly personally believe that trump is going to surprise everyone pull out a victory and that we're going to see 4 years of incredible prosperity that's what i believe i i, I will suck it up and 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 deal with it if it doesn't turn out that way because my peace is not tied to prosperity my peace is tied to Christ and he is the provider of my peace and that's why i enjoy grace enjoy humor good humor every day no matter what um i pulled a little trick on Kathy she's she may still be talking to my son Stephen on the phone out, out in the kitchen and she's the one that 
uh, in a very disgusting uh, expression, discovered the the uh, mess on my ankle. <laughs> so <laughs> before the, the show started, I went and grabbed a Hershey's Kiss. First, I cleaned my ankle and my feet and my shoe. I washed everything off. Yes, washed completely off. But then I got a, a Hershey's Kiss <laughs> and rubbed it all on my leg. <laughs> While she was talking to my son on the phone, I walked up and I said, oh, man, I found some more. And she looked and she went, was so funny. <laughs> well, I thought it was funny. It was funny. It was hilarious. Patty Murphy, good to see you. I appreciate you so much. Well, I think I think that we've got some crab legs in our future. Uh, Kathy was talking about seeing a recipe and getting all excited about it, so I got to see if I can figure out a way to supply my bride with that which she desires. Yes, me, of course, but other than that, some crab legs. <laughs> and so I'm going to let you guys have an awesome afternoon, a wonderful weekend. I, I uh, recommend that you keep our president and his wife and family and the, the uh, cabinet and also pray for judges and pray for lawyers. Pray for all the people that are hearing these cases and pray for great outcomes. Really what we want, what I want, what you want, what we all want is truth. It's it's truth. You know, I had someone argue with me from the other side in, in a very loving conversation. It wasn't an argumentative conversation that all these judges have to- tossed out all of these cases. And uh, this person, um, you know, looks at things from the judicial side of things and said, how can there be any validity when all these cases have been tossed out? And I had to say, it's perplexing, isn't it? But I've heard the, the testimonies of the witnesses themselves, and it all sounds very valid to me. So it, these are things for the, the courts to decide and you and I, we will enjoy the grace of God because nobody can ever outvote God. Nobody can ever demote God. Nobody can ever take away the joy, the joyful sacrifice. Yes, joyful sacrifice. He said, for the joy set before him, he endured the cross. And what joy was that? The joy of bringing glory to his father and freeing you. He thought about us because we were in him when he was on that cross in a representative way or in a very real way. I don't know. I don't know how all that works. It's a mystery to me. But in the same mystery, he lives in me and he lives in you and we live in him in the same exact way. Only to us, we have to struggle to believe it in him. He knows it's a fact. And so for the joy set before him of, of, of enjoying eternity with his father and eternity with his children, namely you and me. He endured the cross. So we can endure whatever hardships are involved in our death to self so that we can serve him with total abandon and great love. Well, I love you all. I thank you so much for tuning into the John Morgan Show. Hallelujah. Have a phenomenal weekend. And I will, if I don't pop up somewhere doing something, over the weekend, then I will definitely see you Monday morning at 5 a.m. for Pray for America. 14 minutes of prayer at 7 out of Second Chronicles 7.14. Appreciate you so much. Don't forget to pick up a copy of War on Fear at waronfearbook.com. And if you'd like to get 10 copies to give away as gifts for Christmas, just email me, text me, let me know, and I'll give you a super wampum humongo discount. All right? God bless you guys. God bless America. Hey, this is Al Robertson from Duck Dynasty and Duck Commander. I want to tell you about a great book called War on Fear from my good buddy, John Morgan. Of course, he looks like George W. Bush, who had the famous War on Terror, so I immediately knew, you know, there was a nice uh, a bit of wordplay there. This book is fantastic. I think it speaks to sort of that natural fear that all of us have 
whether it's public speaking or whether it's the first time you get asked to do something you've never done before, uh, up to you know the fear of, of loss of life, of, of a sick uh, person in your family, all the things that, that we face every single day. I recommend this highly. I promise you will be blessed when you read this book. And it's the sort of book that after you read it, you're going to want to pass that on to someone else, which to me are the best kind of books. So War on Fear, get yours as soon as you can. Thank you so much for tuning in to The John Morgan Show. And I want to give a shout out to my friend Vince Wilcox, who just wrote this book, How to Make a Living in the Music Business. Music. It's an excellent, well-written expose on making and marketing records, songwriting and publishing, managing and booking artists by Vince Wilcox. Esquire, my dear and precious friend, who co-wrote, by the way, or with wrote, my first book, My Life is a Bush, My Life is a Bush, by W, <laughs> by me. Vince, excellent job. I've been looking through the book. It's very good, reading things that apply to me. I love it, and I love you. You're a great, great Christian. God bless you, folks, and God bless America. All right. See you later, everybody. Have a great night and a great weekend.